How do we stay true to our vision? Hello, I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm so happy that you joined me for another episode of Extraordinary Women TV, where we learn how to get our dreams into action. Joining me in the studio is award-winning documentary filmmaker Namisha Mukherjee, whose debut feature, 65 Red Roses, was one of the first official selections for Oprah's Documentary Club on OWN USA. Namisha, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. It's fantastic having you here. You're doing something that so many people dream about doing. You're making movies. Um, and it is by no means uh, an easy task, <laughs> is it? <laughs> I like a challenge. I think that's why I chose documentary filmmaking. <laughs> okay, so you know, you make documentary films. Why did you choose to make documentary films versus uh, a narrative feature film? Well, I mean, I love both. I think both are in both your storytelling, but um, I think why I was drawn to documentary from the get go. I, I had the, the for, good fortune of having a professor at the University of British Columbia where I graduated um, who was an Oscar winning documentary filmmaker and he became a mentor to me and really early on he sort of encouraged me to look into documentary and pursue it and I love people, I love, you know, I love the part of interacting with real people in their real lives and the stakes are, are to me very high when it is real people so I think I've just been, I've just been drawn to it and every time I say I'm going to go into a narrative film I end up finding a subject that I that I fall in love with and that I have to make a film about. So is there a common theme uh, with your films? Now you've made two feature length documentaries, third almost completed, is that correct? The third is in production. In production, okay, and you've got some short films you've also made. Um, but is there a common theme with your films? Um, I think that the first two feature docs were about uh, 65 Red Roses and Blood Relative had, um, had a medical issue at, at the heart of both stories, but I think that I'm just interested in, in stories about people who are overcoming you know, huge challenges in their life and who are able to do it with hope and dignity and, and, um, and yeah, I, I, you know, I joked with my, my family that you know, I've you know, I ended up, I didn't end up going into medical school, but I ended up doing two films that had to do with, you know, with uh, medical issues, healthcare issues. Um, and 65 Red Roses was really, uh, was an exploration of, you know, Canada's healthcare system in the sense that it was one girl on the wait list for, um, for an organ donor. And then Blood Relative really happened as a result of me traveling to India and, you know, being interested in what the healthcare system is like over there. And uh, you know, my uncle ended up being the subject of the film, and he works with kids with thalassemia, and so it got, gave me a chance to kind of almost compare the two systems. So, with sixty five red roses, um, which has really, really launched your your career, uh, it is a film that follows a young woman uh, from BC who's waiting for a double lung transplant. Um, and uh, in the film, she she does manage to to get her tra her transplant, um, what was that experience like for you in really being a, a voyeur in her life? Well, it was our you know it was my first film, my first documentary film. Um, I co-directed it with uh, with my partner at the time, Philip Lyle, and I think for both of us, it was just. Uh, I mean, it was a collaboration. It was a collaboration with Ava. It was a collaboration with her doctors in the hospital. I mean, that film, for that film to have happened uh, the way it did and for us to get the access that we needed, which is really at the, the core part of documentary is being able to get access. Um, you know, that was a film where we just went in with the best of intentions. We were totally upfront and honest about what we wanted to do, which was to make a film to help, you know, raise awareness about organ donation, but also, to tell a story that was going to be really dramatic and really, you know, um, you know, with high stakes, and and uh, and Ava was on board, and her family was on board, and and so then everything just came together, and you know. And 
how did this change your life, making this film? I think Ava, you know, there was almost two parts to our friendship, the part where we made the film and then the part after the film was made, um, where we kind of, you know, I wasn't hiding behind my ca camera anymore and I wasn't following her life, but we had a chance to actually, you know, share parts of each other's lives. Um, and so I think she's had a, a, such a lasting impact on me. I don't, I don't think a day goes by that, you know, I don't think of her. And, um, you know, she was really uh, a huge supporter. You know, she was a huge support system for me. So I think that, um, yeah, I think it, it, I feel very grateful and very lucky that, you know, I had the chance to not just make the film with her, but, you know, had her as a friend. And so your current film, is a little bit of a departure. It was another redhead, actually. <laughs> so so let's, let's talk, what is your new film about? So the new film is called Tempest Storm Burlesque Queen. And it's about uh, one of America's greatest sex icons, Tempest Storm. Uh, she's 84 years old, but she was born on leap year, so she likes to say she's 21. And um, she was Elvis's girlfriend, uh, mistress to JFK, uh, a friend to Betty Page. She did a film with Betty Page. And most recently, she recorded an album with Jack White from The White Stripes. Um, but she had a very kind of uh, difficult, challenging background. Um, and so the film is really about uh, turning, you know, turning pain and adversity into a strength. And um, she became incredibly famous she's one of you know she's a living legend and um, and so the film is about her past but it's also about how her challenges continue now in the present you know and uh, in terms of having relevancy and you know trying to continue her career so now Namisha we're just going to take a quick break and it's my good to know minute and I know you've got a great success tip um, so my success tip would be uh, to you know to not take no for an answer, um, and in a way, you know, as bizarre as it sounds, make rejection your friend. Um, you know, you have to, you take it as a, you know, as a challenge to me. It's a motivator when someone says no to me. It just makes me want to work harder. Uh, so, you know, it's it's part of this business, and the film, you know, film and entertainment industry is full of rejection, and so you have to learn how to just, uh, you know, hear the no and then let it go. <laughs> well, that's good to know, and thanks for that. Hear the no and let it go. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, more on Extraordinary Women TV. So stay where you are. Welcome back to Extraordinary Women TV. I'm Shannon Skinner, and I'm speaking with award-winning documentary filmmaker, Namisha Mukherjee. Now, I'm really enjoying um, finding out more about your films. Now, this is really intriguing, your, your latest film, uh, Tempest Storm. So how did you manage to get one of America's greatest sex icons to agree to do a documentary with you? Well, we couldn't, I mean, I couldn't believe that a film hadn't been made on her before. And yeah. um, my producing partner, Caitlin Regeer, she did uh, an interview with uh, Tempest for her book that she's writing. And um, we had been talking for a long time, uh, Caitlin and I, about working together. And so when she was telling me about this, this interview that she, she had done, and she was saying, you know, I really want to do something with Tempest, I was like, you know, sort of, I was like, no one has done something before? She said, no. So we kind of just, on a, you know, we just decided, you know, this seems like something we want to do. We, we didn't waste any time. We got on a plane, flew to Vegas, and met with Tempest, and, you know, basically told her what we wanted to do, what we wanted, you know, we wanted to make a documentary um, really about this, you know, this undocumented history, because what's so funny about Vegas is they have these, you know, Hall of Fames and museums for the mobsters, but they don't really have anything for the women who worked at uh, who worked in burlesque and and they brought in a lot of, of of tourism they brought in a lot of money and you know they were hard-working women and um, and I think that you know the thing about Tempest is she's one of the last ones left um, so we really felt this might be our only chance and um, and she, she you know thankfully she really loved the idea and she um, she she understood that it was about opening her she's a very private person um, so we were, that was something we were nervous about as well, if she would be open to, you know, letting us into her life. Um, but then, you know, she agreed. She, she heard about the other projects that we'd, we'd done and, and, uh, and yeah, so she gave us, you know, access, full access and, and we, uh, we haven't stopped filming. And you used Kickstarter 
uh, to generate funds to make this film. Yeah, we're one of the first uh, Canadian projects to be a part of Kickstarter's launch in Canada, so which is amazing. So it's a, kind of the best platform we could have hoped for with TIFF and Kickstarter. Uh, it's, it's just been awesome. So how does Kickstarter work? So Kickstarter is uh, crowdsourcing, crowdfunding, um, which didn't exist when we were doing 65 Red Roses and, and Blood Relatives. So it's this is kind of a, a new, uh, it's new territory for me as a filmmaker. But I think it's really, I think it's really exciting because what it does is it enables us to kind of go to Tempest uh, core base of fans, connect with them, and have them become a part of the film, as well as people who are history lovers or people who love music. I mean, anyone who really likes storytelling at the end of the day and believes in the project can become a part of it. And so in these films that you've made uh, about um, medical issues, about a sex icon, uh, through your own growth uh, and experience and learning about the world of film and becoming a successful filmmaker, what does success look like to you? How would you define it? That's a great question. Um, I think that, to me, success is you know making the film, um, and it's really not entirely about the finished product. It's about the process um, and really enjoying yourself every day and being passionate and loving what you do. So, to me, I make films because I love making films. You know it, that that's really that's really it. You know it's I. I can't imagine myself doing anything else. There's nothing else I, I want to be doing. So I'm always just really, you know, I every day wake up excited. Um, so I think to me that, that to me is success ultimately, that I found something that I, I enjoy doing as much as I do and, and uh, you know, it makes it worth it. Um, has it, uh, as a female director in the industry, I mean, Toronto's got a very big, vibrant uh, film industry. Uh, has being a female director here, has that been an obstacle for you in any way? I think it can be, but um, you try to look at it as, you try to shift your perspective on it and use it as an asset. Um, and, you know, to me, uh, each film I make, it's a personal experience. So with Tempest Storm, you know, one of the reasons I think that we're, I'm, I'm making this film is because I'm a female filmmaker. Well, Namisha, thank you for being here today. I have thoroughly enjoyed uh, hearing about your filmmaking um, uh, ventures, and uh, I certainly wish you all the best with your new film and, uh, and all that you do. Thank you so much. Well, for more information about Extraordinary Women TV and my guests, and to watch past episodes, I invite you to visit the website at ExtraordinaryWomenTV.com. And I'd love to stay in touch with you. Join me on Twitter for an empowering stream of Extraordinary Women TV updates. On Facebook, connect with me at Extraordinary Women TV.